ครับก็สวัสดีทุกท่านนะครับก็วันนี้ครับโอ้ฮอของเราไม่ได้จัดตอนเย็นนะครับเป็นครั้งแรกที่เราจัดกลางวันนะครับแล้วก็เป็นงานทั้งวันซึ่งเราได้รับเกียรติจากาทางโอ้ฮอปนะครับที่คือโกลบอลนะครับก็คือคุณโทเบียสขึ้นจะมาพูดนะครับจัดอีเวนต์ร่วมกันนะครับในภาคพื้นเอเชียคุณภาคเอเชียนะครับก็คือเป็นโอ้ฮอปเอเชียทัวร์สองพนะครับซึ่งคุณโทเบียสเนี่ยต้องตะเวนไปรอบๆเอเชียนะว่าจะเป็นเกาหลีนะครับญี่ปุ่นนะครับหรือว่ามาเลเซียสิงคโปร์นะครับประเทศไทยนะครับก็อยู่ในหนึ่งในในกลุ่มด้วยนะครับก็วันนี้ครับก็เป็นครั้งแรกนะที่เราได้เขาเรียกหลายๆคนนี่นะจากว่ามีใครเคยเข้าอีเวนต์ของโอวอลตอนเย็นบ้างฮะนึกถึงนะเคยเห็นอยู่สักสิบครับตอนสักสิบคนอื่นนี่ไม่เคยไม่เคยได้จอยใช่ไหมครับก็ไม่เป็นไรฮะจากวันนี้ไปจะได้จอยนะครับก็หวังว่าจะได้จอยกันนะครับเพราะโอเคเพราะว่าโอวอลจริงเนี่ยโอ้วอลในวันนี้นะครับเราได้ได้รับการสนับสนุนจากทางเล็กเทคสวทชนะครับในการให้อนุเคราะห์สถานที่นะครับแล้วก็มีผู้ใหญ่จะมีสองท่านนะครับท่านหนึ่งเป็นท่านพันธุ์ตรวจเอกเป็นคนยั่งยืนนะครับก็สนับสนุนนะครับอาหารนะครับแล้วก็อีกท่านหนึ่งประสงค์ไม่ประสงค์ออกนามนะครับก็ร่วมสุดทศุนมาให้นะครับซึ่งเงินที่ได้ครับก็จะใช้ในการซื้ออาหารกลางวันแล้วก็ขนมเบรกของเราในวันนี้นะครับส่วนที่เหลือจากงานนะครับก็จะใช้ในงานสับสนเรื่องของอวัตต่อไปในอนาคตนะครับก็ก็ถือว่าเป็นนิสัยดีนะครับว่าอนาคตปีหน้านะครับเราวางแผนกันแล้วยาวๆว่าจะจัดอะไรบ้างในปีหน้าซึ่งปีหน้าเนี่ยอย่างเราจะเน้นเรื่องของการทำเทสติ้งก็คือ security testing ของอวัตนะครับก็มีไกด์ไลน์ตรงไหนที่ออกมาก็ตอนนี้ก็ยังเรียกว่าต้องขอเวลานิดนึงครับว่าจะทํายังไงให้เริ่มนะครับเริ่มไปเรื่อยๆว่าเรื่องนี้มันเรื่องใหม่นะครับแล้วก็จริงๆแล้วในเมืองไทยเนี่ยมีแค่นักสกิลตี้ที่ทําเรื่องของสกิลตี้บนบนบนเขาเรียกบนเทสติ้งนะครับส่วนสกิลคอดิ้งในบ้านเรานี่ผมยังผมว่ามันยังยังยังยากอยู่ยากจริงนะครับก็พยายามที่จะผลักดันนะครับไปด้วยกันนะครับก็หวังว่าก็ติดตามกันไปเนาะนะครับก็จริงอาจจะได้วันนี้ครับทุกคนก็คงเห็นอยู่แล้วใน Facebook นะว่าในตอนเช้านะครับคุณทบยาสันจะมาพูดในเรื่องของจาวาสุนทรบายที่เกี่ยวกับคนดีนะครับแล้วหลังจากนั้นเนี่ยตอนบ่ายนะครับเราจะมีวิทยากรมาขึ้นเป็นเหมือนกับพันธุ์ดิสคัชชั่นนะครับซึ่งเรื่องเกี่ยวกับวิทยากรหลายท่านเลยในวันนี้นะครับอันที่หนึ่งก็คือดรกิตินะครับซึ่งท่านมาถึงทำงานแต่เช้าเลยครับนะครับมานั่งรอนั่งมาฟังด้วยนะครับแล้วก็มีคุณรวิทัศน์นะครับแล้วก็คุณตงคอนะซึ่งอีกสองท่านอยู่ตรงนี้เดี๋ยวหลอกเปิดนะครับซึ่งทำของโมบายคนดีนะครับอ่ะก่อนที่จะเข้าสู่สิ่งที่ของโทเบียสเนี่ยของขอญาตนะครับพูดถึงว่าโอวอฟคืออะไรก่อนนะครับโอวอฟหลักๆเนี่ยก็คือเป็นเป็นการรวมกลุ่มกันนะของคนที่สนใจเรื่องของ security นะครับโอวอฟมีย่อมาจาก Open Web Application Security Project นะครับก็มีเว็บไซต์อยู่ที่โอวอฟหรือโอไนะครับก็เห็นที่บอกว่าเป็นกลุ่มคนที่สนใจเรื่องของ security ของบนแอปพลิเคชันนะครับแล้วก็มารวมกลุ่มกันแล้วก็ศึกษากันนะครับแล้วก็ในโอวอฟเองเนี่ยก็มีมีเขาเรียกมีสแตนดาร์ดมีมีทูสนะครับมีเครื่องมือต่างๆมากมายเลยนะครับให้เราสามารถที่จะเลือกฉายได้ซึ่งวันนี้เดี๋ยวคุณทบยาเซนก็อาจจะมาอธิบายให้ฟังว่ามีมีอะไรบ้างนะครับซึ่งในโอวาของประเทศไทยนะครับของไทยรายชัปเตอร์เนี่ยเราเองก็เราต้องการที่จะเลสไวเนสนะครับก็คือสร้างความตระหนักของเรานะครับใน,ในของเรื่องของเปอร์นะครับเพราะที่ผ่านมาเนี่ยโอวาฟมีจัดมามาสักสองปีแล้วนะครับแต่ที่ผ่านมานะครับคนสนิทที่เข้าเป็นเซกิวตี้ซึ่งเป็นซิกเกิลตี้เฟิร์มก็จะไม่ในมองมือของของเดวลอปเปอร์นะครับแต่ในในปีนี้ในปีที่ผ่านมาปี2557เนี่ยเราคุยกันในทีมเราบอกว่าเราตาเก็ตกุ๊กเราไม่ใช่นักซิกเกิลตี้ละตาเก็ตกุ๊กของเราคือจะต้องเป็นเดวลอปเปอร์ซึ่งเราต้องสอดแทรกเรื่องของซิกเกิลตี้เข้าไปแต่ในมุมของซิกเกิลตี้เราไม่ทิ้งเราต้องการให้สอดแทรกนะครับความคิดไอเดียของเดวลอปเปอร์เข้าไปด้วยผมต้องการจูนทั้ง2กลุ่มเข้าด้วยกันซึ่งมันเป็นเรื่องยากมากนะครับอย่างที่บอกครับว่าว่ามันเป็นจุดที่ Security ก็จะไม่เข้าใจเรื่องบอกเปอร์เรื่องบอกเปอร์ก็จะไม่เข้าใจทาง Security นะครับสองจุดนี้เลยอยากให้ร่วมกันนะครับแล้วก็อยากจะสร้างคอมมูนิตี้นะครับในการเรียนรู้ที่ที่เรื่องของ Security กับ
แล้วก็มีเรื่องของการทํางานทําความร่วมมือกันนะครับไม่ว่าจะเป็นเรื่องของเขาเรียกเป็นพับบิทไพร์เดตแอนด์เนชิพนะครับก็พยายามที่จะโคกับงานภาครัฐนะครับในการที่จะผลักดันเรื่องของ Security คือบนเว็บแอปเนี่ยให้กับงานภาครัฐด้วยแล้วก็ยังทํางานกับอยากจะทํางานร่วมกับซอฟต์แวร์เฮาส์นะครับว่าจะทํายังไงอย่างที่จะผลักดันเป็นอาจจะเป็นสมมุตินะฮะเนี่ยนะแน่นะคนจะมีมาตรฐานมาตรฐานว่าเฮ้ยเป็นมาตรฐานการพัฒนาเว็บอย่างปลอดภัยจากเวลาเราเป็นซอฟต์แวร์เฮาส์ใช่ไหมฮะเราขายงานนะครับเราส่งงานมอบงานเนี่ยแทนที่จะส่งเป็นเว็บธรรมดาที่ไม่มีสกิลตี้ก็อนาคตต่อไปก็จะเป็นส่งเป็นเว็บแบบที่มีสกิลตี้แล้วนะครับอันนี้ก็ในอนาคตที่ที่อยากให้เกิดขึ้นนะครับแล้วก็ทํางานกับพันธุ์เนชิตต่างๆนะครับซึ่งพันธุ์เนชิตตรงนี้ก็คือเป็นคอมมูนิตี้ต่างๆที่เราเราจอยอยู่ไม่ว่าจะเป็นเรื่องของคาร์สกิลตี้แลนด์เซเซแทนแชปเตอร์นะครับแล้วก็มี2อ6พันหกประเทศไทยนะก็จริงๆก็อยู่ในกลุ่มที่ที่ทางานต้องการอยู่นะครับแล้วก็มีการแชร์เขาเรียกว่าแชร์วิทยากรบ้างแชร์หลักสูตรบ้างแชร์เนื้อหาบ้างนะครับก็ถือว่าเป็นเป็นนิสัยดีนะที่ว่าจากมือในหลายกลุ่มนะครับแล้วก็อันสุดท้ายเป็นสิ่งสําคัญเลยอยากจะสร้างนะครับเรียกว่าเพิ่มยุคใหม่นะครับไม่ใช่แค่เรียกว่าเพิ่มธรรมดาแต่เป็นเรียกว่าเพิ่มแบบสกิลนะครับเข้าไปด้วยนะครับก็หวังว่าอนาคตต่อไปก็คงมีพวกเราในที่นี้ก็กลายเป็น security expert นะครับในมุมของคนที่ซึ่งประเทศไทยหายากมากจริงเพราะว่าในเมืองไทยเนี่ยผมตั้งแต่ผมทำงานเนี่ยผมเคยเห็นแค่ไม่กี่คนนะที่เป็นเดเวลอปเปอร์แล้วก็ผ่านไปเป็นนักเซคิวริตี้แล้วการเป็นเซคิวริตี้ในมุมของของของคนอ่าเขาเรียกเดเวลอปเปอร์นะครับซึ่งในเมืองไทยนี่ผมเพิ่งเคยเห็นรู้จักกันไม่กี่คนนะสองสามคนนะครับซึ่งในอนาคตต่อไปอยากให้เกิดขึ้นเยอะๆนะครับอ่านี่เป็นออร์แกเนเซชันชาร์ตของของแคลนชัปเตอร์นะครับมันจริงๆแคลนชัปเตอร์เนี่ยเนื่องจากโอวัมเนี่ยเขาเป็นคอมมิชชั่นทั่วโลกนะครับแล้วเขาก็มองว่าในแต่ละประเทศเนี่ยก็มีการบริการภายในประเทศเองได้นะครับซึ่งแต่ละประเทศเนี่ยมีเนเจอร์มีเคาเจอร์ที่แตกต่างกันนะครับเขาก็เลยอยากให้เราเนี่ยก็เลยมีการตั้งตั้งชัปเตอร์ต่างๆของเมืองใหญ่ทั่วโลกเลยนะครับแต่ญี่ปุ่นนี้ก็มีทั้งทั้งคันไซทั้งทั้งโตเกียวชัปเตอร์นะครับหรือทางอังกฤษเองประเทศอังกฤษก็มีทั้งแบบของลอนดอนในชัปเตอร์พวกนี้นะครับประเทศไทยมีชัปเตอร์เดียวคือแคนาดชัปเตอร์นะครับซึ่งเองผมเป็นดีเดอร์อยู่แล้วก็วันนี้มีโคดีเดอร์อีกคนหนึ่งแต่เขามาไม่ได้ตอนนี้คุณโรคนคนดีเดอร์ของเราคุณจันรักถ้าใครเห็นใน Facebook กรุ๊ปของโอวัฟเนี่ยก็จะคนได้ยินชื่อนี้อยู่ว่าคุณจันรักนะครับตอนนี้อยู่รักคุณเทนที่ญี่ปุ่นทำงานที่รักคุณเทนนะครับก็ไม่สามารถมาร่วมได้นะครับก็อนาคตต่อไปเดี๋ยวเขาเขามีนำมือไทยคนอาจจะเชิญเข้ามาพูดที่ฝั่งว่าเอ๊ะที่เมืองนอกในระดับของรักคุณเทนเนี่ยเพราะเราอยากรักคุณเทนเนาะก็คือเป็นเว็บซื้อขายของออนไลน์นะว่าให้เขามีการบริการทำงานยังไงนะทำไมเขาถึงสามารถที่จะทําระบบดีใหญ่ได้นะครับอันนี้ก็จะเป็นอนาคตต่อไปนะแล้วก็เรามีทีมแคปเตอร์แมเนเจอร์นะครับแคปเตอร์แมเนเจอร์มันมี2คนนะครับก็จะมีคุณน็อตนะครับคุณน็อตเราทำเศรษฐกิจนะครับแล้วก็คนนึงคือคุณน็อตไม่ไม่มาแบบนี้นะอาจจะติดภารกิจนะครับแล้วก็มีเทคนิคคอนซัลแทนต์จะเป็นฝ่ายวิชาการนะครับเทคนิคคอนซัลแทนต์มี2คนคือคุณสุเมฆกับคุณโยธินนะครับซึ่งวันนี้รู้สึกว่าติดงานอยู่คงมาเทศานะครับแล้วก็มีทีมพีอาร์นะมีคุณแสงนะครับก็จะเป็นจัดการเรื่องของการอัปเดตอีเวนต์นะครับแล้วก็มีถ่ายภาพถ่ายวิดีโอนะครับแล้วก็ตัดต่อลงลงลงลงเลฟลงอะไรให้พวกเราสามารถที่จะติดตามต่อไปได้นะครับแล้วก็มีทีมทีมสถานที่นะครับมีคุณดีนั่นงข้างหลังนะก็เป็นคนติดต่อเรื่องของสถานที่จัดงานต่างๆให้นะครับแล้วก็สุดท้ายทีมทีมสปอนเซอร์เนี่ยก็คือเพิ่งจะได้ทํางานก็ตอนนี้ครับเพราะว่าเนื่องจากว่ามีสปอนเซอร์เข้ามานะก็จะต้องมีคนจัดการมาจัดการเรื่องของเงินนะครับก็นะเขาต่อไปอย่างหนึ่งก็ก็อยากทำให้มันยั่งยืนเนาะไม่อยากจะแบบจัดจัดแล้วหายไปเหมือนคอมมิชชั่นต่างในเมืองไทยอะไรคงเคยเจอทําให้ไม่คงไม่ได้เหมือนคือคอมมิชชั่นในเมืองไทยแข็งแรงอย่างมีจะว่าบุคคลแบบแข็งแรงมากมีอาจารย์หกหกใช่ไหมฮะซึ่งผมเองไปตามใน Facebook อยู่แล้วก็เป็นคอมมิชชั่นที่ผมอิจฉามากนะคือคือค่อนข้างเข้มแข็งนะครับแต่ในมุมของสกิลตี้เองอ่ะผมกล้าบอกเลยว่าไม่มีคอมมิชชั่นไหนที่ที่แข็งแรงขนาดนั้นนะครับซึ่งเองเราก็ข
แล้วก็มีเรื่องของการทําเอกสารต่างๆเรื่องของการเขียนด็อกิเมนต์ต่างๆนะครับเผยแพร่บทความทางวิชาการนะครับแล้วก็ให้ความรู้เรื่องของ security นะครับเรื่องบนบนเว็บแอปนะครับมีหลักสูตรนะครับเรื่องของพวก training course แล้วก็พวกโปรแกรมอะไรแบบโปรแกรมก็อย่างเช่นเป็นพวกวิดีโอนะครับให้ความรู้เรื่องของของเดเวลอปเปอร์ต่างๆอย่างนี้ก็เป็นภาพบรรยากาศในครั้งแรกสุดเลยในของปีนี้นะฮะของปีนี้เราก็มีนี่จัดที่สุนทรสิทธิ์นะครับตอนหลังมาเนี่ยเราได้สถานที่จัดที่มหิดลฝั่งตรงข้างนี้นะครับก็สถานที่ก็ใหญ่ขึ้นนะครับคนก็ตอนที่จัดที่สุนทรสิทธิ์เนี่ยคนนั่งคือคือนั่งกันเต็มเต็มจริงคือเต็มแบบไม่มีที่เดินเลยผมไม่รู้ว่าที่นี่มีใครได้ไปที่นั่นบ้างฮะมีที่ไหนไปผมจำได้นะครับวิ่งเห็นนะตอนนั้นเนี่ยโหก็ยี่เสริมมานะครับสถานที่เราไม่พอจริงก็เลยก็ถือว่าดีใจนะครับเพราะว่าเป็นการสร้างนะครับได้บอกเพิ่มขึ้นใหม่จริงนะแล้วก็อตอนนี้เราสถานที่ใหม่ที่ที่ไม่ฮิดโดนนะเราจะมาสัมผัสสองสองครั้งแล้วนะครับก็สถานที่กว้างขวางใหญ่ขึ้นนะครับแล้วก็สามารถที่จะมีวิดีโอให้ซึ่งทางทางมาฮิดโดนก็เป็นคนตัดให้เราด้วยนะครับก็ถือว่าเป็นการสร้างพื้นฐานเข้าไปนะครับอ่ะอันนี้ก็สุดท้ายแล้วนะครับก็ใครสนใจนะครับที่อยากจะพูดคุยกันเรื่องของโอวอหรือว่าจะแชร์ความรู้เรื่องของ security ของเดเวลอปเปอร์นะครับโดยเฉพาะอย่างพวกเราเลยครับผมเรียนเชิญทุกท่านเลยนะฮะเข้าไปที่เฟซบุ๊กกลุ่มของเรานะครับชื่อกลุ่มวอลทไทยแลนด์นะครับเราจะมีการไปสัมพันธ์นะครับเรื่องของสัมมนาต่างๆนะครับแล้วก็เรื่องของเรียกเว็บไซต์เว็บลิงก์ข่าวต่างๆหรือด็อกเมนต์ต่างๆที่ที่จำเป็นเกี่ยวกับเรื่องของการทำพวกสกิลคอร์ดิ้งสกิลเทสติ้งนะครับก็ก็จริงๆก็อยากเรียนเชิญทุกท่านเข้าไปจอยกลุ่มกันแล้วก็มีรายแรกเปลี่ยนกันโพสถามกันนะครับก็อาจจะมีหลายคนที่มาช่วยตอบนะครับหรือบางคำถามที่อาจจะยากไปก็ก็อาจจะต้องหวังเพื่อนพวกเราทุกคนช่วยช่วยกันนะว่าเอ้ยมีอะไรอยากแชร์ก็มาพูดคุยกันนะครับก็หวังว่านะครับว่าอยากให้อีเวนต์อย่างนี้จะจัดขึ้นมาเรื่อยๆนะครับแล้วก็อยากให้พวกเรานะสร้างคอมมิชชั่นกันแล้วก็อาจจะแชร์คนละขาบางคนอาจจะมาจากอาจารย์บางคนอาจจะมาจากจาวาบูแคมบางคนอาจจะมาจากกลุ่มที่บอกเพื่อนอื่นก็ก็ยื่นมือกันเข้ามาก็มารวมกลุ่มกันก็เป็นเหมือนกับเป็นเครือข่ายกันสร้างเครือข่ายให้มันใหญ่ขึ้นนะครับก็ในโอกาสนี้นะก็คงก็ขออนุญาตนะครับเป็นเป็นตัวแทนของกล่าวเปิดงานในวันนี้นะครับแล้วก็อันต่อไปครับขอเรียนเชิญคุณโทมัสครับ We to introduce Mr. Thomas ก็ต้องคือคือที่เดียวสวัสดีครับผมจะลืมนี่ for a second I I oh it's okay <laughs> I like the last. Sorry, I think I do this way. Don't worry. Thank you. Um, I really like the last bit, which said, uh, "Keep talking together." From Kitty Sex. Um, I think that's a lot what OVAS is about. That we have a large global community, and you can uh, share your knowledge and you can ask your questions to your peers. Actually, not only your peers here in Thailand, but your peers around the world. So um, I hope maybe this can today inspire you a little bit to ask questions and to think about things and maybe to start a new project for yourself, um, translate some o v e r s material into Thai language, or, or really start uh, some security project that you find interesting and cool. I'm sorry that I cannot speak Thai. So um, if I speak too fast, please give me a signal. Maybe raise your hand, and I can speak very, very slowly. <laughs> and if you feel I speak too slowly, you can tell me as well, and then I can speak very fast. You know, I can get very excited and speak totally crazy. So um, you help. I need your help to find the right speed. Uh, can you hear me at the back? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Actually, if you like, you can come to the front. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, there are some seats in the middle, and there is an advantage, as you will notice, uh, for sitting not too far in the back. But it's your choice. Uh, maybe later you want to come down. You will see why. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, this is part of the Ovas Asia tour. Uh, we do um, some tours across regions. 
uh, one in Latin America, we did uh, one last year in Europe, and we do this this year in Asia. And um, for this we have chapter events within like two or three months across the region. So we had uh, one in Hong Kong, we had three in China. I just come from Tokyo where we had uh, two great events in Tokyo and in, in uh, Osaka. Uh, we will have an event in Korea and uh, obviously also in Thailand. Hooray! Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, Kitizak asked me to talk a little bit about, about uh, secure development, secure coding. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, just so I manage time, the first break shall be at 10.30, is that correct? Okay, good. Uh, yeah. So, oh, you were, the first people are already leaving for the break, okay. <laughs> Uh, this is based on six uh, OWASP projects, but there are many, many more. So OWASP has about 170 projects, um, but I combined some of this uh, for, for this talk. Maybe let me ask you first, um, who of you is a developer in the room? So I have a rough understanding. Okay. Yeah. Who of you is a mobile developer? Some, but not so many. Okay, so what do the others do? Like you write uh, web applications? Yeah. Web? Okay. In Java? Okay. Great. Excellent. Good. Then we are spot on. Um, by the way, I love questions. And I love to have a conversation. So um, I may ask sometimes something. And also, if you have a question, feel free to just raise your hand or just jump in and shout at me, oh, this is all stupid, or something like this. Um, so, yeah, this is just a, a one slide about why I'm in the room. So I started as a developer, actually, like you, uh, about 15 years ago. Um, like back in the day, actually, I, I was a trainer for Java 1.1. I'm not sure whether anybody actually knows this kind of API anymore because it's so small compared to what we have today. But it was fun. And um, at some point, I, uh, my bosses decided that I should move into management. So um, I'm not developing anymore, but I'm still reading code quite frequently. And I, I give these secure development type of uh, introductions. Um, so now I, I work mostly uh, with security managers on how to improve their organization. For OWASP, I'm uh, on the global board. So I'm basically a little bit responsible for uh, what OWASP does. So if you later come have an idea, or if you have an idea uh, now about things that you would like uh, from OWASP, or that you would like to do with OWASP, please come to me in the break, and I would love to talk with you. Um, yeah, I'm, we are also conducting a CISO survey and I'm doing some secret development stuff. I also have a background with the IETF, uh, which is quite a technical board. Uh, IETF stands for Internet Engineering Task Force. That's basically the guys who standardize the protocols of the internet. So like HTTP, TCP, IP, MPLS and so on. Um, so this is a little bit uh, dry technical background. But I, I love the, the, the people there. Yeah, and Kitty Zag mentioned there's the Cloud Security Alliance and some other people. Good. Okay. Um, so maybe to give you a small introduction, let's start with this slide. What do all these companies have in common? They all get hacked. Okay. Um, so it's it's actually, if you read the newspaper, everybody does these days. I'm not sure how it is in Thailand. Maybe, maybe how, how is it in Thailand? Do you read some Thai companies get hacked as well? Yeah, or, or they don't say it? They, they don't say it? But someone found it. So, someone found it, yeah, okay. I think that uh, nowadays I, I often hear people saying like there are two types of companies, the guys who got hacked and the guys who just don't know it yet. 
So um, I think if you're very small, maybe you have a small chance of that not having been hacked yet. Um, one of the problems uh, with, with current security in companies is that you do the development and many times developers maybe don't worry so much about security and that at the end you have like two weeks where you do security testing. I'm not sure whether that sounds familiar with some of you, but that's really difficult because you have like like many years of development, you know, this is all your business logic and code and, and all this stuff. And then at the very last bit, you kind of go in and, and do a pen test. And do you really expect you find everything in these two weeks that you've done like in, in years before? Uh, no way. No? Um, so the whole model is kind of difficult and, and that's why I'm here to uh, help us change the way we write software from the beginning instead of just writing and later coming in and trying to fix the problem. So maybe one of the things that you may find interesting, um, actually as we have quite a number of developers in the room, uh, who of you uses a framework? So uh, obviously you use Java, but uh, probably you use some web frameworks as well. So any any frameworks that you use? Yep. Spring framework. And actually, I'm going to introduce a new uh, model here. That's the reason why it's good to sit in the first row. I like questions. Do you like chocolate? <laughs> yeah? Let's make a deal. <laughs> so here, the first one. First winner. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so Spring is one of them. Others? Yeah? Other, other frameworks that you're using? Sorry? Code Igniter, yes, yes. May I? Okay, sorry. Um, I, I'm not gonna continue with the talk before so easy questions, so they're gonna be a little bit more difficult. So, so, so some other frameworks that you use? Spring, what, what was there? Speak louder, please. Maybe I come to you. Maybe we have to do the microphone. Okay. Um, how about Hibernate? Some use that? Apache. Tomcat. Somebody use Tomcat here? No? Seriously? Okay. Maybe you're too shy, or maybe you don't like chocolate. I don't know. Um, maybe we have to work on this. Maybe in the break you want to try some chocolate and then we can get more conversation. Um, there's a problem with frameworks. And that is, uh, maybe you implement them one time, but you know, you keep it in your code. And there is a kind of different analogy. So frameworks are part of your products, whatever you write, of your applications. And we are um, what we eat in this case. So, well, this is the, the burger thing. So if you eat too many burgers, obviously it's not so healthy. You should better eat some Thai food. Um, at least I prefer that. Uh, but if you think about your frameworks, um, a lot of them are, let me see this here. Yeah. So imagine uh, your framework is your burger. So you, you eat it and you keep it in your code. And after maybe six months, there's a new version of the framework. Do you update the framework in your code? Maybe not. Maybe, maybe you sh I mean, you should, you should. But uh, maybe you made some adjustments, you made some corrections in the code, and suddenly it becomes a big mess to actually update your framework that you use. So now comes along the hacker. And he looks at your application and it's actually quite easy to fingerprint what framework you're using. So I can, I can send some HTTP requests and I will quite quickly understand whether you are, what version of Apache, of Tomcat, of Hibernate you have in your application. 
So now I know it's an older version. So, ooh, okay, now you may think, oh, big headache, how can I break this? No big headache at all. I just go to the old release notes and see what they fixed in the recent version. Because that's exactly what I need to try to break in the older version. So I just look at the new release notes, and I know you haven't updated it, so I know exactly what I need to try to break your application. Uh, which is actually, I find, a, a quite scary and quite, quite frightening scenario. Um, wh why am I talking about this so much? Is like, I think most companies today, you include a framework in your, in your source code, but you don't update it usually afterwards. And we haven't seen many attacks on this, uh, on this path yet, but this is just something waiting to happen. Please come in, just take a seat. Front row, there's plenty of seats. And I'm not dangerous, okay? I'm not biting, I'm not shitting, I'm just throwing chocolates. I'm seriously a very, very nice guy. Um, so, let me see. So, for example, if you think about the stuff that you're using, actually, I jump ahead. Uh, like, if you think there was a study about how many frameworks are downloaded at the moment. And even just downloading, people are still downloading outdated frameworks, like with an older version, which are obviously a known vulnerable. Um, so we have like, this is, yeah, this is a study about open source libraries where we had about 20, 20 one, one in four had known vulnerabilities because they were already outdated when they were downloaded. So they weren't even included yet. Um, and here we have something from Spring, for example, uh, Apache. So there's a lot of stuff where people download uh, libraries that are no longer up to date. So if you start, if you start writing an application, uh, think about uh, what frameworks you include and also how you're going to update them when they update. You know, they, they can release a new version, so how do you take this into your code when they release it? Because otherwise, it's going to be too easy. Okay. Yeah, so this is... Okay, I'm going to skip this. This is a little bit boring. Let's get technical. Let's get started. Okay. Um, who of you knows uh, what HTTP is? This is the super simple question. What is HTTP? Come on, guys. Good morning. HTTP. <laughs> oh, ah, yeah. There's a man with courage. I love that. <laughs> Our HTTP is like a protocol which stands for the hypertext language. Yes. Which is our, like on the web base, to turn from the HTML code and then encode it towards the show as a web browser. Yes. Uh, yes, it's a protocol, hypertext transport protocol, HTTP. And basically everything you have in your application today, you communicate HTTP. In some cases, uh, hopefully you can communicate via TLS on HTTP, so HTTPS. Uh, actually, if you, if you use your browser, you, you know there's this little line in the, in the address bar, there's an HTTP sense there. So that stands for the protocol. Um, there is something wrong with HTTP. And that is when we first developed HTTP, uh, we were not very kind of worried about security. And maybe we, we, we were not very smart. <laughs> um, so for example, HTTP is stateless. And actually, you don't know whether the person asking you now is the same person who asked you a minute ago. So the, the protocol itself is actually very basic and very simple. And it doesn't have many security features. So we had to later uh, bolt them on, build them on top of HTTP. And that makes it sometimes um, less secure. So with HTTP there are two methods to send messages. One is get and one is Post. Yeah, who said that? Yeah, 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 definitely. The post is worth it. But the next question is going to be more hard. 
<laughs> so, um, which one is better for communicating confidential information? Get or post? Sorry? Host, hey, the lady in the front. Yeah, absolutely. Why? Why is host better? Yes, it is excellent, perfect. Uh, it is. It is not. The data is not displayed in the URL address bar, but the data is part in the payload. That's just excellent. Yeah, perfect. Wow, okay, I, I, I can speed up. That's excellent. Um, why is the address bar so, so dangerous? Um, you, may, you may think, well, the address bar, okay, that's, that's bad. You can read it. But the problem is if you surf the web, and if you, for example, you surf in your company page, and at some point, maybe you click a link, and Let's say you have, you work during the day. You work in your company application, and so then you have lunch. So you think, oh, let's have some lunch. So um, maybe you click on a, on a link for recipe.com to, to see what you want to cook for lunch. So you click on the link, you go to recipe.com. What happens? Your browser sends actually a referrer part in the header to the new site, to recipe.com, with the whole URL where you came from, including everything that's in it. So if your username, if your password would be part of that URL, or if a session token is part of that, recipe.com, the, the administrator, can actually read all of this. He can see it, he can take the URL and, and use it himself. So suddenly you give all your credentials, all your private information to uh, recipe.com or evil.com or hacker.com. Um, so that's why this is very dangerous. And obviously you want to communicate uh, over an encrypted channel. So you should use uh, TLS or SSL uh, and not only HTTP. So here is explained. So here's the GET request. You see it in the in the URL itself is the name or other variables. While in the post, uh, the content is here in the body. The body is fully can be fully encrypted if you use TLS, and uh, it is not ex uh, exposed in a referrer. Excellent. Um, I mean. Yeah, this is now a dangerous question because we are recording this, so I'm not going to go to anyone, but who's still using HTTP GET? Okay, maybe, maybe you're too shy to show. But maybe you should go back and check whether there are some old stuff that's still using that. Um, good, and another thing is, so, so first is you use HTTP GET and POST, and then the other thing is obviously you want to encrypt it. Uh, so how do you encrypt um, communication with HTTP? I mean, maybe this question is too simple. So how do, you, how do you make sure that nobody can read what you sent, except the person you sent it to, of course? Or my yeah. answer is game. I'm coming, I'm coming. Uh, yeah. Okay. We're going to use the HTTPS. Protocol. Yeah. To yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. HTTPS. And and actually, maybe I should get you more to the front so I don't have to run so much. <laughs> um, okay. But maybe this is a good exercise for me. I mean, I'm getting too fat anyway. I love chocolate too, you know. Um, so yeah, you use HTTPS instead of HTTP. Um, there is some. There are some tricks with HTTPS. I'm not sure whether you heard of. Uh, there was recently uh, some problems with it. There is, for example, there was the Heartbleed bug, uh, which was in the OpenSSL implementation. Uh, there is quite a number of weaknesses in the current implementation. So, for example, some uh, servers still support weak algorithms, and so on. So, there is quite a lot to do. Um, I will not go into this too much in detail at this point, 
um, because we could probably speak another hour just about this one channel protection, and I think that's not why you're here today. Um, but what I would say is there is there's a cheat sheet from OWASP. It's like three pages, and it speaks about how you make SSL secure. And you should consider uh, looking at your TLS or SSL implementation to make sure that you are using uh, strong algorithms, always. Good. So, let's have an injection. Um, who of you knows what an SQL injection is? So this is going to be more difficult. Yeah, okay. Go, shoot away. Uh, the SQL injection is uh, uh, the SQL command to input the, uh, you can use the SQL com command to input to the, to, to the application and this makes the, this makes the, the, the bad thing. <laughs> Make the bad thing for your application, yes. like a select star for somebody or drop the table here. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I think nearly every web application and also nearly all mobile applications today use a database somewhere. Has any, actually, has anybody here an application that doesn't use a database? Hands up. I want to know. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, well, I mean, you can, you know, you can have some basic web pages. For that, you don't need a database. But if you do anything that's kind of worth doing these days, I find it, it's most likely there is a database. MySQL, or whatever. And the moment you use SQL, the moment you potentially expose yourself to an SQL injection, uh, let's see how this works. Oh, actually, you know what? If every if everybody knows what it is, I can already skip. So it's a little bit your choice. You want me to explain, or you already know? Uh, I shouldn't ask all questions. I should ask one or the other. Okay. Let's see. Okay, I give you I give you a brief one. Um, so you have your web form on the top. Actually, make, let's make it differently. If you if you already know this and want me to skip it, raise your hand now. <laughs> you even go get a chocolate. But, okay. Um, good. Okay. So then I I do. Um, so you have your web form and you have your application server, you have your database server, you have two great firewalls, very secure, you know, your, your security manager will say, oh, we are totally safe because we have a firewall. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And we have antivirus, so we have no problem at all. Okay, so there sits this nice guy in his, uh, on the front, and uh, well, he sends his first request. So he sends this to the application server. What what the heck is that? Hyphen, uh, no, single quote or one equals one. What does single quote do? Who, who of you knows SQL? Some of you? Okay, so what does single quote do? Yeah, you really have to come down, you know, this is getting... <laughs> Or thank you. Which order that argument is gonna make whatever statement before them to be true. And this can you be used to just like return the username or this password from the database. What is what does single hyphen uh, what does single quote do? It's gonna cancel it's it's like an emergency the command behind it. I'm not sure on this all but it's a, what is the yes. single quote? What does it do? Oh, string. Oh, okay. String? Yeah, I need chocolate. <laughs> okay, so who got this? Hand it over to him. Let's see. First the chocolate and then the microphone. Uh, <laughs> we have to write for the chocolate. Uh, to complete the previous thing and, yes. uh, and all with the uh, true statement. One equal to one. Yeah. So the, the single quote 
closes or opens a string. And it, it moves you out of a data context into a programming context. You will see in a minute. Thanks, perfect. So um, I show you here. So this would be how the, how the SQL statement behind it looks like. So the developer maybe thought select star from table accounts where account equals, then he opens the string, and then suddenly this evil attacker closes the string already. But he, he of course, he, want, he didn't want that to happen, uh, the developer. So then he goes with or one equals one. And this is, not, this is not worth a chocolate, but still a question. What is one equals one? Two, two yes. I mean, that was too easy, seriously. <laughs> um, so one equals one, and then uh, it, it just continues the normal string. So what happens with one equals one, it's always true, so I select everything. I select all, all the columns in the table because it's true everywhere. So I send them back to the middle server, and then I send them back right through the very safe firewalls, you know, all totally safe. Yes, we are totally safe, sure. And the data is totally safe outside at the attacker now. Um, so let me show you, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, here is one nice. Okay. So here, th this would be this would be how you think you're gonna do this. This is what the developer has in mind. So maybe he has in mind a select where uh, from the user table where the username is something and the password is something. This is what the developer would want to do. Uh, so maybe you as a developer, you expect maybe the username is chip and uh, the password actually should never be password, but um, some safe word, uh, like also not 123456, okay? <laughs> By the way, you know the most common password? Yeah, 123456, at least. Uh, last year it was. Um, so, so what you would think is like the developer's intention is select star from user table where username equals chip and password is password. This would be what you want, what you thought. Now comes along this evil person and he's just not doing what you want him to do. And, oh please come. So instead of, instead of uh, just entering their password, they actually enter something like blah, single quote, so they close the string, and then they move into the SQL language, or one equals one. Yeah. So when you then insert this in the whole SQL statement, you get here where username equals John and password equals blah, close, or one equals one, and you're there. So this is always true, because the last bit is always true. And if you combine it with or, it's all also still always true. Basic logic. So, um, what you get back suddenly, you get the whole table, instead of uh, just one line. Now there's, there's quite a number of of replies that I sometimes get is like, oh yeah, but you know, you only get like maybe a few words back because the field is only limited in the reply and so on. Or, or with that one, actually the first one I usually get back is like, oh, you can't really do much with it. Um, well, there's, there's some nice comments like drop tables, update, so basically, you can actually do anything you want with it. And this is your data, so this is, this is the heart of your application. And then, then the, next, the next comment I sometimes get back from developers is, yeah, well, but you can only work on this one table. Who of you has heard of union in SQL? No, not so many. I don't see any hands going up. So, so there's a nice combination. You, you launch your SQL statement and you extend it with union and, uh, and kind of combine into it other tables. With that, you can actually access any table. Um, so then, then sometimes I get another comment back, it's like, yeah, okay, but the, the answer field is like only 30 characters long. So you can't really get much information. 
well, you know what, I can get the first 30 characters and then get the, the second one and the third one and the fourth one. So, I, yes, I, I use substrings. So, in fact, I can actually read the whole database by just submitting a lot of requests. And databases, guess what, they are extremely fast. So I can make thousands of requests per second. So within a minute, I actually can read the whole, the whole stuff. I just have to write a little script. Um, to give you one sample, actually in one case, uh, a friend of mine, he, he didn't even get a text field back. He only get one bit back. So he only got a reply yes or no, depending on the query. So your application would maybe show like uh, a, a check mark field, yes or no. This was all the reply they would get. And uh, now you would guess, how can you extract a whole database with only one bit? You do it one bit at a time. So what he actually did is he concatenated and he, he really kind of asked, what's the first bit, what's the second bit of the string, third bit, and so on. And overnight, he downloaded the whole table bit by bit, just with this uh, SQL injection. Maybe this is a little bit too complicated. Um, okay. So let's get more chocolate. So what's the problem here? What's happening here? Oh no, actually this is not worth. Uh, let's but let's show you one thing. Well, one other problem with SQL injection is that sometimes the data where you get it from and the data where you put it in the database can be very far apart in your code. This can be like 30 classes away. So you can, you get your data somewhere, and then you write like uh, 20 other classes, you put it, you concatenate it, uh, you, you cut it, you slice it and dice it, and suddenly you send it to the database. And the whole path, maybe you don't know exactly what's in the end ending up there. So that makes it quite difficult if you would just try to sanitize. So let's see, I think I should get some code. Yeah. So this is this is how you prot uh, pro uh, protect against SQL injection. If you're a Java developer, uh, there's a very simple command, and that's called prepare statement. Who of you has heard of that before? Okay, this is making me scary now. Now, please raise your hands if you are you using prepared statement at the moment. Yes, you can raise your hands. No, nodding is not. I'm not seeing everybody nod. Okay, some people are raising their hands. So that's about half. Okay, so that means the other half are all vulnerable to SQL injection. Welcome to the club. Um, prepared statement is actually very simple. So instead of just creating your statement and submitting it directly. You first create the statement, and you don't insert the variables yet, okay? There is still the question mark here. So the variable is not entered yet. At that point, you actually already pre-compile the SQL statement. And only afterwards, you enter the variables. So here, here you enter the variable 1 and variable 2. Can you see it? Okay. Um, so, why is this better? Anyone wants chocolate or I just explain? Okay, I have some chocolate for me then. Um, so, th this is better because before if you set this one hive, the single code, you could actually exit the data uh, layer and go into programming. You could close the string with this single code. Now, because the statement is already prepared, you cannot exit the data la layer. So even if I, say, if I put a single quote in there, it will be seen as data, not as programming. And if I put single quote or one equals one, uh, the database thinks this is a string, not programming. So in fact, this little trick disables, disarms all SQL injection. Okay, if you do this, you have no problem about SQL injection. If you don't do this, you have a lot of problems. 
Um, so what? So it's, it's just a simple step. You prepare first, and then you add the, the variables. You don't create it dynamically. Uh, yeah. Actually, I, I sometimes hear developer tell me, well, you know what, but we need it dynamically. We really need this dynamic SQL because it's, uh, I don't know, faster, more flexible, something. And um, first of all, it's not faster because if you prepare statements, actually they are faster because they are like pre-compiled and uh, accessing the database will be faster if you do prepare statements. And second, um, there may be a single case or some few cases where it, you really need dynamic SQL, but I haven't seen them yet. And I have seen a lot. And uh, every time I encounter this that a developer tells me, oh, it must be dynamic, I say, well, let's look at this and let's try to make it prepared. And after a while, maybe it takes an hour or two or five hours or a day, suddenly we find out, oh, actually you can do it with a prepared statement. So I would challenge you, if you think it needs to be dynamic, usually there is a way to make it prepared. I'm, I'm not saying uh, this is always true, but I'm saying this is nearly always true. So, yeah. um, and if a developer comes to you and says, oh, I, I can't do it, then I'll really challenge him, because it's very likely he can do it. So let's have a chance for some more chocolate before we have some more break. So what's the, this is a little quiz, okay, for, for those people who read Java, and I mean, we are here about Java coding. So what's the problem here? Actually, there is two problems. One is kind of too easy to find, and the other one is maybe hard enough to find. Yeah? Any ideas? Anyone care for chocolate? So, what's the problem? And we can start with the question, what happens here? What does the first block do? It's like a code part of authentication. Yeah, the part of authentication. Um, in the first part, you kind of get some variables. It's a do-get. So you, you read the variables out of a get request. Um, what's the second part doing? Trying to find a user ID. Using username and password. Yes. And any guess what's wrong here in the second block? What happens? So we create a statement here. Would you write this code in your application? And if not, why not? So it's maybe a little bit difficult to find. Think about, think about what an attacker, what happens if an attacker enters um, single quotes or one equals one in the user parameter here? What will happen? Will it work or not? Actually, do, do you have like a laser pointer or something? Maybe. Maybe my, uh, my arm is not so big. Okay, maybe this way. <laughs> so, I, I do, yeah, sorry for this. Okay, can you, can you see the top? Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, ah. But, there's some other Okay, wait, wait. I, I come back to you. Ah, yes, oh, perfect. Yeah, laser pointer is much better. I mean, I feel like a cat, you know, chasing the laser. laser. <laughs> Have you ever tried this with your cat at home? <laughs> kind of fun. Uh, okay, so here you get the parameter username. Okay? So then you validate. You, you start the function username, name, password. Here you set the, st the string. So you go into this validate. 
validate user. We have user and string password. <coughs> Let's assume I enter here um, single quotes or one equals one, as we had before. Um, so what, where, where does this go next? Where is the next user? Here. So if I put this here, what will happen? Will this be an SQL injection or not? Somebody is nodding? I mean, not, nodding is not, not speaking, but I, I will be generous with chocolate today. So why, why is this happening now? You can select all, all, all ID. They can come in the last one and then select all of ID in the table. Yes. yes. So, so this this will be a SQL injection down there, because he will actually terminate the string and then have an always true statement. So the the select ID will be for all users because this is true for everyone. Um, so the main problem here is. The guy is not using prepared statement. Let's see. Yeah. Can I show this? No, it's not showing. Okay. So you should, instead of just executing your statement directly, you should first prepare it and then enter the parameters afterwards in the second step. By the way, as I mentioned before, there's a little one that's much too easy to find. Um, what do you think about submitting um, your username and password over a GET request in HTTP? Sorry, I get some more chocolate and you get me an answer. If you reach for the URL bar. Yes. It will be shown in the URL bar, first one, so that's because GET is bad. And how about HTTP. Yeah, yeah, somebody's saying something. I hear it, I hear it. Yeah, it's transferred in plain text. Unencrypted. It's not SSL encrypted, okay? So this is like this is like showing your password and username to everybody on the internet. It's like I'm saying here in this room, my username is Tobias and my password is 123456. Oh, please don't hack me. <laughs> Okay, so no. So, so this is why I said this is too easy. Um, here on the very top you see do get. So first, wrong type of request. Second, unencrypted. And third, don't use unprepared statements. Good. Okay. I'm gonna jump this. Oh, actually, let me go. There was one thing. So I hope I could show you a little bit um, how SQL injection can be a bad thing for you. Maybe, maybe for some of you. Um, the good news is it's really easy to fix. So if you use prepared statement in your application, in your, if, you're, if you're a mobile developer on the back end, you will most likely have an SQL database. So if you use their prepared statements, you are safe. You just have to make sure you use it all the time you, make, you submit a database request. Okay? So it's, it's actually very simple to fix it. You just have to do it and to check that you've done it. So you can either, you can either be a very disciplined developer or you can use some static code analysis tool to check what your developers enter. Good. Let's see. Oh, I jumped already one step ahead. Okay, um, by the way, prepared statement is available in all other languages as well. So, I mean, this is today about Java, but you have that in Perl, PHP, C, Sharp, .NET, and so on. Um, and, oh yeah, this is, you can actually do injection not only with SQL, but you can also have uh, like shell, shell commands, you can inject stuff. Um, or you can also inject something through file names. So there's a lot of other opportunities as well. 
Uh, good thing is there is a cheat sheet, of course, and yeah, SQL injection. Uh, SQL injection prevention cheat sheet. So if you're not sure how to do it, or if you want to read afterwards, just uh, open this URL and uh, you will be able to check, read up on this. Uh, actually, I promise to be punctual, so if you like, we can have the break now, or we have the break in five minutes. It's up to you, what do you think is better? Okay, so then I keep checking, while he's checking. Uh, let's talk about passwords. I mean, this may be something you might find useful. So, sorry, <laughs> sorry, uh, I still need to get used to the uh, AC. Um, how do you store passwords? How do you, how, I mean, simple question, it's maybe too simple. How do you store passwords? Yeah, sorry, there's an answer. Hashing. Yeah, excellent. Actually, there's a bonus question. What is hashing? Um, <laughs> hashing is a um, is a uh, verify data. Uh, when when you get your raw data, when you hashing it, uh, the the hashing is made with a is a changed data. And, and always same if the raw if the raw data is same. Yes, it, it, it is a uh, uh, yeah. If if you have two values and they are different, if you hash them, you get a different result. Yes. yes. Thank you. And the beauty of hashing is it's a one-way function. So there is no way to calculate back from the hash value what was the initial value if the hash implementation is correct. Um, also, a hash value is, oops, I have to be careful that I don't get an echo. Okay, thank you. Um, also, a hash algorithm is, um, normally you get only about, for SHA-1, for example, you get only 160 bits. So maybe you have a document that's one megabyte, but you always get a, a hash value with a fixed length for example, 160, or if you're using SHA-2 with 256 bit, then it would be 256 bit long. Um, okay, if you're not on camera now, you can feel freely to show your hand in this case. Uh, who is still using MD5? No one? Okay, who knows what MD5 is? This is an easy, you know, this is not dangerous. You should know what MD5 is, you just shouldn't use it. So, um, yeah, someone likes more chocolate. That's good. <laughs> and good exercise for me. <laughs> All right, the MD5 is just the way you encode the data. And by the way, if I can answer, how does the MD5 break under attacker? Or you may give me another chocolate. <laughs> okay. Today, our, in, at present day, there is a way to collision of the MD5, which is our not same raw data, but when after you've encoded, they're gonna have the same MD5 yes. with the same data, and that can be used our just like their DLL attacking yes. for some web pay, yes. so like some web application. Yes. Another chocolate for me? No. <laughs> no, no, you have to work for it. <laughs> uh, yes, so with MD5, there's actually a number of problems. Um, the first one is it's no longer, uh, the security properties of the hash algorithm are no longer valid for MD5. They are no longer true. So, for example, you can actually change a string a little bit and still create the same MD5 value. And why is this a problem? So if you're, if you're storing hash uh, passwords, for example, if you store the hash value, if you find any other password with the same hash value, your application will say, yeah, that's the right person, okay? Um, so if, if you can find a similar hash value, you're, you're ready. 
Okay, you can break in. Um, yeah, there's actually a tool on the internet which is like an MD5 decryptor. So you can actually enter an MD5 uh, hash value and just click a button and then you get the, the raw password or, or a, a matching password. Uh, how about should we have the break now? They are still working on it? How many minutes should I? Ten? Yeah, perfect. No, that's perfect because then we can do the, the password in these ten minutes. Okay, so first the storing password. Okay, so use hash. Um, second one is how do you transmit passwords? This is too easy maybe, Vida, again. So, how do you transmit passwords? Someone else maybe, you know, other people <laughs> may like some chocolate too. So, I heard something mumbled here. Yeah. It should be encrypted with password. Yes, it should be encrypted, absolutely. We have a winner. Um, you also want to say in time, like you can say Sorry? Maybe someone wants to say in time. Oh yeah, of course. Guys, if you like to answer in Thai, that's fine. We have Kittisek here, okay? So don't worry about English. Uh, by the way, do I speak too fast or can you understand me? It's okay? Okay at the back? Yeah, roughly? Okay. At least you can understand me well enough to nod. That's good. Um, so here you, yeah, here you see some example. Um, we don't have a whiteboard. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit challenging to explain. Um, if you if you use hashing today, you should actually not only simply use the hash algorithm, but you you, sh you should use something we call an initialization vector or a salt. You may read this. Uh, who has heard of this before? Some people. Not so many. Okay, so um, the challenge with hash is, is um, you have a lot of computing power out there nowadays. So if you just use this, the, the, simple, the, the simple hash algorithm, you can translate like uh, maybe you have a whole table of possible passwords and you calculate all the hash values for it. And hackers actually have done this. Uh, it's called rainbow tables. So actually, uh, hackers have like rented, you know, there's this great thing, cloud computing nowadays, so where you can actually rent like a thousand computers for a couple of weeks, and you can calculate uh, millions of operations per second. So you can actually build a whole table of all kind of possible passwords with the, with the resulting hash vectors. So if you break into a server and you download their, their table of passwords, which is in hash values, so in theory, it would be safe. The problem is now, I just look up in my table what password does correspond with this hash value. So actually, within a second, I know what's corresponding. I can't make the, you know, I cannot, hash algorithms are one-way functions. So I can always only calculate from the original value to the hash value. But if I already calculated everything, it's easy. I don't have to calculate it now. I just look it up. You understand the concept? So, so with these rainbow tables uh, available on the internet, it's actually, if you just use the plain hash algorithm, it's trivial to look it up. What you can do now is you have an initialization vector, that's what we call it, where you, where you put another uh, parameter into your hash algorithm at the beginning. And that can be something you set for your application. So this is one, like an integer or something, and uh, this is one value you set at the beginning, you set it for your application, here. And with this, actually, you can no longer use the rainbow tables, because it may be possible to calculate rainbow tables for every password possibility, but it's not possible to calculate rainbow pos uh, tables for every password possibility and every possible sort, every possible initialization vector. That's, that's like more electro electrons than the universe has or something. 
So the complexity for this is far beyond what's possible. Um, yeah. So this is why if you're using, if you're storing passwords, yes, you use a hash value, and second, you should use an initialization vector in your application. This is just to show you, uh, like, MD5 decryptor. So if you run into some MD5 stuff, it's really trivial to get the password. Um, actually, let's do something a little bit um, more simple. Uh, imagine someone in your application, some, one of your users, calls you and says, well, I forgot my password. Please give me a new password. What do you do? How do you reset a password? Maybe too simple again. Okay, he is really into chocolate or he really knows a lot. Maybe both. You can send the special token to the user email address and then you're going to click on the link to reset his password. Yes? How do you know it's me? By the email. I don't think I'm going to encrypt the email address. It's not necessary. No, 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 no. You don't need to return. Actually, you already get a chocolate for raising your hand in this case. <laughs> um, I mean, what, what, what you normally encounter is maybe your IT team will ask you, uh, who are you? Or, so what's your name? Um, they should ask you one secret question. Some ask you a stupid question like, what's, uh, what's your birthday? Why, why, is, why is birthday stupid? All your friends know when your birthday is. And actually everybody on Facebook knows when your birthday is, probably. So not only all your friends, all your enemies know also when your birthday is. So that means if, if I'm not your friend, I can call your support line and say, oh, my name is, by the way, what's your name? Dream. Dream. So I say uh, my name is Dream and uh, my, my birthday is on the 1st of January. Uh, let's say you're, you're still very young, uh, 1995, uh, exactly, yeah, exactly, so so suddenly, um, actually if you would give me your birthday now, it would be recorded and everybody on the internet would know your birthday, okay? So um, suddenly uh, the, the IT staff would say, oh yeah, okay, you dream, I send you, what, what shall be the new password? And then you say, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay, no. Um, so, so first you should ask a secret question and something that's reasonably secret. If you cannot do that, uh, you can use something like, uh, you can say, well, I don't give you the new password, but I send it to the pre-registered email address. Okay, it, it needs to be pre-agreed on. So if I call you and I say, well, my name is Dream and my email is uh, dream at gmail.com, please send me my email, uh, my, my new password. That's not working, okay? Because I just gave it to you. Um, it needs to be pre-agreed. Or you can use, you can say, well, let me call you back on the telephone number that you have given to me beforehand. Okay? Uh, so it needs to be something that you agreed before, not during that conversation. Um, by the way, for example, actually Amazon and Apple are really not so good at this. Uh, so, for example, there was recently a problem with Amazon, uh, and they use, if, if you, do you know Amazon? Yeah. yeah. Do you do Amazon shopping, online shopping here as well? Yeah. So, if you, if you forget your password here, they, actually, they ask you something smart. They, they ask you, what's your credit card number? I mean, it's kind of, and what's your address? So, it's, it's not perfect, but in the hope that you wouldn't know that your credit card, I mean, I'm not, I would not necessarily know your credit card number. I, I shouldn't, but yeah, I mean, we can talk about this. Uh, if you go shopping, actually everybody you buy something from knows your credit card. Uh, however, they can ask you quite a few stuff, so credit card, secret number, whatever, and billing address. So that's actually a good idea, and, and to some degree. The problem is, your billing address is not secret, okay? So I can know this very easily. And then, they made a kind of a stupid mistake, and that is 
One thing is they verify how, how they verify it's you, but the other thing is they are very user friendly. Okay, they want you to go shopping and very easy. So it's actually very easy to add a new credit card to your account. You don't need a password for that. You just call them and say, well, my name is Dream. I live in Bangkok, my address is XYZ, and my credit card number is, and then you give, you give just the credit card of yourself. You know, it doesn't have to be his. You give your own credit card. So, so you, you add it, so they say, okay, that's nice, we add another credit card to his account. So you hang up the phone, you pick up again, and you call Amazon, and you say, oh, my name is Dream, I forgot my password, can you please send it to me? And they say, well, you know, it's okay, but we should verify first that you are really Dream. Can you give me your credit card number? Yes, of course, I just <laughs> told it to you. Okay, so I, I pick up my own credit card that I just gave them five minutes ago, and bingo. And they reset the password. I mean, they do another smart thing. They don't give me a password on the phone. They send it to his email account. But once I'm in his email, um, well, I suddenly also have his Amazon. So, so you see, you need to be really careful with the secrets that you use to verify that this person is really him. Uh, date of birth, definitely not worth it. Uh, some use mother's maiden name that's also, well, not too safe. Uh, yeah, name of first pet. I mean, this is stuff you see on, if you do a proper research on Facebook, you know the name of the first pet, okay? It may be the name of the current pet. Or uh, favorite movie. I mean, this is a trivial conversation. Hey, what's your favorite movie? Of course you're going to tell me. It's not a secret. Okay? Um, yeah, so it's good if you can use uh, something that's really a secret or something that's, uh, we call it two-factor authentication, that's based on what you have. So it can be based on your mobile phone, that you own it. It can be based on that you have an email account with that credentials and so on. And I see our morning breakfast is ready and actually, let's have a break. Uh, 10 minutes, 15? 15 minutes, so we're gonna recontinue at 11. Thank you.